Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. Before I get started, I'd like to give those an opportunity who want to support my network. You can go to Amazon.com, and I have a number of books that you can possibly purchase. Uh, let's get started on uh, just a brief, brief view. The last offering is called The Holy Spirit Teaches. Um, it's the things that be taught to you when you say you got the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is not just rambling off at the mouth when you're at the church and you're going, yip, 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 and all that little crazy stuff. No, the Holy Ghost teaches you all things according to John 14, 26. Prophets of Israel. If you really want to get an understanding of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, understand what he sent his prophets to his people for. Hebrew doctrine of Christ, continuation of what the Holy Ghost teaches, the doctrine of Christ, the things that Christ spoke about. Hebrew lessons, furthering the understanding of the Holy Ghost, what, does, what the Holy Spirit teaches you. Hebrew instruction manual. These are not language books. These are about things that a Hebrew Israelite should understand. I don't say either. I won't say Hebrew or Israelite because we're talking about the same thing. You know, you don't use the same. You know, King David. You have a couple of uh, books of poetry. Poetic Thoughts of a Young Lion in the Asphalt Jungle, and also Spiritual Growth of a Young Lion. You can go to Amazon.com, do a search do a search on this name here, and you will pull up all ten of my books I have so far. I also have a, a Book in ebook format only called uh, Understanding Genesis the Beginning. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. Greetings. My topic today is abominations of Israelite men and women. Israel, I've listened to the men of spirit regarding their position on whether the men of Judah, the so-called black men, should leave their women for another race. You know, you know, think about this this was a the topic that's going on because you know you got a lot of foolish men that don't know God talking this kind of way. But I'm going to I'm going to start first with the troubles that we have with one another and and the fact is the reasons why we should or should not go to another race outside of Israel The men on one side of the argument are saying that yes they should leave the so-called black women especially if she cannot present herself the way that the so-called black man wants. Many things that black women do is simply not for the black man. Black men does not like their women wearing too much makeup, changing their appearances. This is why so many one-night stands occur. When men lie down with a woman, they expect someone to resemble that person they lay down with. That is not what he gets when she pulls all of that makeup that makeup off, the girdles and the wigs. 
These are the same people that call black men a bunch of liars. Yet, each time they get dressed, everything about them is a lie. I'm keeping it 100. Keep it, keep it 100. A lot of women do this. And they're not only black women, but basically mostly every woman, all women. Because you know what? Especially white women, they, they put on so much makeup. When you see him in the natural, you be like, damn, that's her? Oh, my God. They're just plain-looking women. So with makeup, they're gorgeous. The women of Judah are haughty. The so-called black... Are so arrogant. The, the, the so called black women are so arrogant. Boy, I've got errors everywhere. The so called black women are so arrogant that they think they are settling when they marry a man who actually loves them, but he is not making six figures. But she is overweight, has too many miles, already has a child, and not wearing her own hair, and has too many tattoos. Now, if I'm not talking about you women, don't don't uh, get all upset because uh, it's not talking about you. But this is the this is normally the, the women that represent you know Black America. You know, they, they loud mouth and, you know, they, they overweight and they talking about their, their 8 or 10. They're a diva. They have not been listening. The men of Judah are not interested in what they're offering. Isaiah 3 and 16. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion, this is Judah, the, daughter, the women of Zion, are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks. They always want it. And wanton eyes, walking and missling as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. They, they mean that they got jewelry on everywhere. They would wanton eyes. They always want something, because the fact is, every, if, you know, they are trying to associate their, themselves with some man's pockets. Young women today don't they, they don't know how to be a wife. Only thing they want to associate with is, is some man who got a lot of money's pot, uh, a lot of money. They want to associate themselves with his pocket. And a lot of men are saying today that there is no advantage of getting married to a woman, knowing that the government will allow that woman to take half of his resources, especially if he got a lot of money. So these are the things that you know the men have start. You know they they are against. They, they, you know, because the government is totally against men, even white men. They don't want, they don't want uh, to get married to some woman who attaches themselves to they to his pocket and say, "I won't have." You know, there have been uh, concerns where a woman call the police on her husband. I've, I've heard this a number of times, even in the white community and black community, where the woman call the police on her husband. She, she uh, put a restraining order up on him. And it's his house. She cleans his house out, takes everything. He loses his job. His house goes, you know, he, he can't, he can't uh, continue to pay the house, no. Lost his house. And she takes all of his stuff. So men, are the, you know, fact is we need, to, we need to come to understanding what our problems are. And what we need to do to fix it. Let's get to understand what haughty is. Haughty. There's some, there's some uh, synonyms. Proud. Snobbish. She thinks she all that. Arrogant. All. Conceited. Or snobbish. I've said it twice. This represents many women of Judah. They are not interested in dating an average man of Judah who makes roughly around 41000 a year. 
If you talk to many so-called black women, they think that they are they deserve a man making a hundred hundred thousand and up. That they should be a stay-at-home wife, but they are not wife material. A man finds a wife. He does not make you a wife. And, I, and this is this is the thing that all men should understand. You don't make anybody your wife. You find a wife. When a, when you make when you make a woman your wife, she already has the qualities of a wife. She knows how to cook. She she knows she knows all the things that she need to be for a man. She need to be a helpmate for a man. You know, she ain't should, she shouldn't be worried about. I need to get my PhD and all this other stuff. If she if she is concerned about her man, she need to be a helpmate for for whoever that man she's with. But then again, there's some criteria for men that. She need to follow. Be a help me for. Proverb eighteen twenty two, whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth obtaineth favor of the Lord. A man finds a wife. If a woman does not have the skills to be a wife, then she does not qualify. Which most women of Judah think that they should be entitled to a man's wealth. Isaiah 3 and 17. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Because the women of Judah are always manipulating their hair, they are pulling their hair out. The daughters of Zion in this instance represent the women of Judah. You know, Mexican women and, and, and Hispanic women don't have this issue. So the daughter of Zion is referring to so-called black women. You know, y'all are the only ones that have problem with your hair coming out. I'm not saying all of the all of the black women, but the majority of the black women today have problems with their hair coming out. I, I said it. Because y'all won't leave your damn head alone. You know, And this was not an issue back when I grew up. In the 70s and 80s, this, this was not an issue with black women hair falling out. So the most I got is talking about present day so-called black women. Because at first, you know, in the 70s, th there was no problem with black women hair falling out. Black women had hair full of hair. Why do you think there were pictures of black women with afros big as I don't know what? Angela Davis style afros. And a lot of black women have that. You watch Soul Train, you'll see it. Isaiah 3 and 18, in that day the Lord would take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. Once upon a time the daughters of Zion did not have to put their feet upon the ground because they were well taken care of. In today's climate, that has changed. Deuteronomy 28 and 56. The tender and delicate woman am among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her feet upon the ground for the delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. The women have turned against their husband. Eighty percent of them filed for divorce from their husbands. And the majority of the women would not allow their children to see their fathers. So, that's when you become evil towards your children. Because regardless of whether you file divorce from your husband or not, those children need to interact with their father. If you make it about a money issue, they, you know, money doesn't, doesn't buy love. All the money in the world don't buy happiness. Them children still need to interact with their father. Isaiah 
3 and 24. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. This is describing the women of Judah today. Because y'all think y'all got it going on? Y'all, you know, you're in the wrong clothes. Because a woman is wearing the wrong garments, their private areas have bad smells. The most I told women and men what is appropriate to wear. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. She shouldn't be wearing pants. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Men walk around in dresses. You see them at these galas and stuff that they have. Black men in dresses. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You are disgusting to the Most High. You're not serving your God doing that. The woman walk around in pants. That's why, you know, they, they don't understand that smell. I don't understand why y'all don't smell it. Men do. And then you want to, you want to call men all kinds of names and stuff when they, they don't want to deal with that smell after they deal with it. Oh, man, she stinks. And, and they trying to be nice by not saying nothing to you and just leaving you the hell alone. She need to figure that out herself. I don't need to talk to her about it. Ministrous women are raising our children. What makes a woman mistress according to the Bible? I'm simply going to provide the precepts so one can get an understanding of what a menstruous woman is. Isaiah 3 and 12. As for my people, children of their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. These menstruous women are single parent families who mostly had a baby out of wedlock. The children are being raised in a household without their father. These women are giving bad advice to their daughters. For example, they tell them to go to school, get a job, and be misindependent. Second Ezra 5 and 8. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be off, sent out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. These children are monsters in their communities. They are being raised by women. They are taught to uphold a street code instead of the laws of the Most High God. What make these women menstruous? Let's get an understanding what menstruous is according to the, according to the dictionary. Menstruation. Menstruation or period is normal vaginal bleeding that occurs as part of a woman's monthly cycle. Every month, your body prepares for pregnancy. If no pregnancy occurs, the uterus or womb sheds its lining. The menstrual blood is partly blood and partly tissue from inside the uterus. It passes out of the body through the vagina. Vagina, okay. A menstrual woman is unclean according to the Bible. According to the law in the Torah, a man is supposed to separate himself from a menstruous woman. Basically, a menstruous woman is simply an unclean woman. Leviticus 15 and 19. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue is her, her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. When a woman is on her period or have a bloody discharge, the law requires that she be separated seven days. If you touch her, you will be unclean until sunset, which is the beginning of the next day. Leviticus 15 and 20. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. Whatever a woman lies on while she is on her period is unclean. After a period, all of her bedding 
must be washed. I mean, all of it. Sheets, everything must be washed. This is the nature of a menstruous woman. She is unclean. Now the thing about this, put it into perspective. A single mother, if she is not a widow, then she's mistress. Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God would judge. I'm not talking about, you know, she's on a period. No, she's mistress because she's unclean. You know, she ain't got married, and she's still practicing the same thing. Now, I'm not saying she's, you know, she's mistress at the point where she had a, a child out of wedlock. And if she had not repented and, be, and, and, and come to the understanding of who she is and, and, and stuff like that, she could, she's continued to be mistress. She does not believe in the marry before you carry rule. So some of our women have three or four children with three or four baby daddies. This is whoredom. Leviticus 23 and 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. A whore, according to the Bible, is a woman who is operating sexually outside of marriage, creating bastard children. Deuteronomy 23 and 2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. As a repentant Israelite, you must ask this question. Why does the Most High not want a bastard among the congregation? If you think about it, the answer becomes simple. The Most High commands you to marry from among these people. Or marry from your own people. Let's, let's put it like that. Jeremiah 29 and 6. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give you daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. However, many of the children and their mothers do not exactly know who the fathers are. Who the, who the father, they don't know. They don't know who the fathers are. Because the woman breaks up with one man and immediately begins sleeping with another man or men. She can only speculate who the father is. If her, if her bastard offspring is in the congregation and unbeknownst to them, they marry one of their siblings, the Most High God commands us not to sleep with closest of kin. The Most High is strictly against us having sex with closest of kin. This is why he don't want bastards in the congregation. Because You know, I got a brother that got 27, probably 37, 40 kids. About all these different women. And they don't know, the kids don't know their uh, brothers and sisters from all these women that he slept with. And I, and I told him, what if what are your, kid, your, your kids meet each other and, and they start having sex? This, this is simple if, you, if you're in this book, you understand. You know, most of the guys don't want a bastard in the congregation because you don't know the father. The mother don't know who the father is because if she's a mistress woman, she's sleeping with men and men. She pregnant with one man and then she get a boyfriend next week. Within a month, they start sleeping with another guy. Or start dating and sleeping with two or three other guys. There are reasons that the Most High does not want bastard children in the congregation. Creating offspring from your closest of kin can violate the law. Leviticus 18 and 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. I'm the Lord your God. Speak unto the children of Israel. I'm the Lord your God. That's very possessive saying. I'm the Lord everybody else's God. He didn't say that. 
Tell the children of Israel, I'm the Lord your God. Everything in this Bible is referring to the 12 sons of Jacob and their descendants, Israel. The Most High God is the Lord our God. Leviticus 18 and 3. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, will I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Israelite men and women are not supposed to be worshiping the gods of the other nations. If it is not pertaining to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then it should not come out of your mouth. Neither should you bow down or serve it in any way. Leviticus 18 and 4. Ye should do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I'm the Lord your God. He keeps saying it. I'm the Lord your God. It does not matter what job you hold or your occupation. You must keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Leviticus 18 and 5. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and judgments, with which if a man do, he shall live in them, I am the Lord. If you live in the commandments, then evil will pass your door, because the Most High God will protect you. Leviticus 18 and 6, none of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The Most High God does not want menstruous women or their children in the congregation. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, unclean mistress, and I will receive you. When you repent, righteous Israelite men are commanded to separate themselves from menstruous women and the monsters that they have created. This is written in the New Covenant. The nature of a menstruous woman. The Most High God gave us the nature of an unclean woman. However, this is the exact nature that most young Hebrew men desire today. They flock toward these women. Proverbs 7 and 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. Let us get wisdom and understanding. And I'm a this, this lesson also is to teach you the difference between wisdom and knowledge, and understanding. There's a di difference. A lot of you Israelites, you Hebrews who are in the truth, don't understand this. That's why if you think you're doing the work because you, you are pertaining to knowledge. It's good to have knowledge, but wisdom is something that you need first. Let's get wisdom and understanding. Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all day that do his commandments. His praise endure it forever. If you fear the Most High God, judgments for violating his laws, statutes, and commandments, then you must have an understanding of his laws, statutes, and commandments. Proverbs 7 and 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. As soon as Israelite men fight their way out of poverty and become successful, they mainly choose so-called white women and Asian women. However, since they have no understanding, our young men do not understand the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. They don't understand. That they don't supposed to be around these, be with these women. Oh, you can talk to them, fine. Marion, no. Deuteronomy seventy three. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. You know, because a lot of people have knowledge, understand, know the law. But they don't have no wisdom because they don't fear the Most High. The sons of menstruous women who lead them, teaching them, but they have no understanding of the law. 
did not teach them or tell them who the Most High God commanded them to marry because they did not marry and having children outside of that, that union. It, it, it's that simple. You know, you got mistress women who are out, you know, just sexing without marriage and having two, three kids, no, no, no marriage in sight. And then, you know, you, how can they give their child advice according to God? And a lot of these people go to church every Sunday. They don't believe in marriage, though. Advising their kids, and the next thing you know, their kids get successful marrying a white girl, marrying an Asian woman. And then as soon as these marriages break up, the, the, the white girl or the Asian woman going to take half of their stuff or more, put them on child support, pay them 80 grand a month, break them, totally break them. And they're going to be crying and complaining about paying child support. I, I was just listening to uh, on TikTok uh, the other day. This uh, NFL player played for the St. Louis, uh, not St. Louis, it's, no, Kansas City, wide receiver. What's that wide receiver name? Play for, uh, the popular one, real fast. Kansas City, Dominic. Tyreek Hill. Hill. Complaining about. Child support is breaking him. He's broke. I don't think I just want to say, nigga. You making all this damn money and you just giving it away to women. To mistress women. That's all they want you to do is, 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 is shoot up the place in them. Get them pregnant. They don't love you. You don't know what to marry. A lot of you men don't know who to marry or what to marry because this is the thing y'all do. Give y'all money away. And I guarantee these some white girls. And 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 they are taking him to they are taking his ass straight to the bank. Good for him. I, I'm not wishing him no bad luck, but the fact is, when y'all when y'all go wrong and do wrong, what you expect everybody else to say? Pat your back, oh man. Oh man, it'll get better. No, Negro, that's you you deserve everything everything you get. You make it 10 million a, a, a darn year at least, and you talking about you broke. Boy, you a darn fool. Like Malcolm X said before, and somebody probably said it before him. If you stand for nothing. You fall for anything. And a bunch of you Negroes that get all this money, you falling for every damn thing. Do rub me 74. Now let me start at 73 again. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. We're talking about the other nations. You don't marry other nations. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. You don't give your daughter to, to uh, his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? Deuteronomy 74. For they will turn away thy sons from following me, that they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. That's why we destroy it now. Because they have turned us away from following our God, and he has destroyed us. Today, the majority of Israelites are not following the Most High God before they get with another nation. However, when an Israelite gets involved with other nations, it becomes less likely that they will ever repent. Proverbs 7 and 6. For at the window of my house, I look through my casement. I do not know if King Solomon witnessed this or this was a prophecy. I say that it was a prophecy. Proverbs 7 and 7. And behold, and I and beheld among the simple ones, I discern among the youths, a young man void of understanding. Dumb, dumb as a box of rock, don't understand nothing. King Solomon is basically looking through his window at the young men of today who are void of the law. I'm solidifying that 
King Solomon is visioning a prophecy. He's seeing what the Most High God was showing him. I'm looking through my window, through the curtains, and seeing a, a young man void of understanding. Proverbs 7 and 8, passing through the street near her corner, and he went away to her house. This man who was who who has no understanding is walking down the street, taking a special route that passes by this minstrel woman house that he likes. Proverbs 79, in the twilight in the evening, in the dark, in the black and dark night. In the twilight in the evening is implied that it is night when some minstrel's women come out. She probably out there on the host road. So he's making a path to her, to the area where she's walking up and down the street. Proverbs 7 and 10. And behold, there met him a woman with a tire of an harlot. Hey, big boy, you going anywhere? You want to have a party? And subtle of heart. Mistress women dressed like prostitute, cunning, trying to trap many of these Hebrews. That potentially have a promise, have a promising sports career. They pretend that they care, get pregnant, and now these men would wound up paying them millions of dollars in child support. Proverbs seventeen eleven. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Mm. <clears throat> These type women are loud. Loud mouth always in the street, showing her buttocks, breasts, and warmly curves. Men without understanding have flocked toward these type of women. Why? First Timothy 2 and 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness, and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Under the new covenant Messiah, under his priesthood does not want mistress women dressing does not want mistress dressing women because it causes problems with the law. Matthew 5 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. When, when Christ says this, he's talking about the Torah. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Christ is quoting his father's doctrine. Exodus 20 and 14, thou shalt not commit adult, adultery. Adultery, voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and a person who is not his or her spouse. Matthew 5 and 28, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. If you look upon one of these mistress women with their buttocks and breasts on display and lusting after them, you have committed adultery in your mind already. It amazes me why many of these men allow these their wives to dress like harlots so that other men can sensually lust after them, after her. Because I, I, I'm going to tell you, if a man married to a, a woman and he allow her to, every time she go out, have her butt all out and everything, breast all popping out and stuff, and he don't tell her, look, babe, you know, you need to cover up. That's just way too much. And you know you got these men out there lusting after you. But I'm with you, the man I love. I don't give a damn. I don't want the attention. Put some clothes on. Modest. You ain't got to be, you know, showing your ass everywhere you go. I don't want to see it. No, I don't want other men to see it. First Timothy 2 and 10, but which becoming women professing godliness with good works. If you are a repentant Israelite woman, you are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Proverbs 7 and 12. Now is she with doubt, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. This, these menstruous women 
or in the streets lying in wait for many, un many unsuspected men. Without understanding, why do young men prefer these type of women who are unclean? Why would you want to lie with them when they have massive body counts? Why you want to lie with a woman that's don't slip around but sleep with everybody? That that's nothing to be proud of. You know, you don't tell people that you're homeless and you're living by the trash can outside of 7 Eleven or something. That's what most of these menstrual women are. They like trash cans. Everybody don't dump in them. Why you wanna take something like that? How does the Most High God feel about profane women among his holy people? What does the Most High feel about menstruous women among his holy men? Leviticus 21 and 7. They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his God. Now, I'm a man of, of Most High God. Most High God don't want me going out marrying some, some, some hoe. Somebody that's been sleeping around with everybody. That's sleeping around with everybody. Profane and unclean. Menstruous. Got four or five baby daddies. Four or five children. And I'm supposed to be a man in the most high God. And... I can't even control my house because this woman got too many men coming in and out to my coming to see my child. But it all instead coming to see her. This precept especially applies to Levite priests, but if it applies to all of the but it also applies to all of the most high God's holy men. Leviticus 20 and 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. So the Most High God said you should be holy to him, for he's holy. You can't be holy. If you are joined together, man, woman, you can't be the holy part, and she be the evil part. She be the menstrual part. She be the... Uh, holy part, and you be the evil mistress part, unclean part. You, you can't do that. When you Israelite women have repented, you clean up your act, put away your mistress ways, and become, whole, become godly, dressing and behaving as the Most High God requires of you. Holy men of the Most High in Christ cannot be dealing with unclean women. What do you know who do not know how to dress? Know what their dietary requirements are and know how to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These are, these are major concerns. You, you dealing with a menstrual woman, she don't even know how to dress, don't even know what to cook. She, have you, she would have you eating all kinds of unclean food. Oh, this is some jambalaya, you know, with some pork sausage and some, and some shrimp and, and, and crab meat. And, and she probably thinks think she's doing a good thing. You be sitting up there like, I can't eat that. This is some shrimp gumbo. Or some seafood gumbo. Got all kinds of crap in that bucket. Leviticus 21 and 9. And the daughter of any priest... If she profane herself by playing a whore, she profaned her father. She shall be burnt with fire. This is how this is how the law required what the law required in the old covenant. If a daughter profane herself and in, in, in acting the harlot out there sleeping around, and her father is a priest, they put they just burned her to death. If your father is a man of the Most High God and his daughter is acting as a minister's woman, her wage is death. 
However, the father can separate her from his house and be justified. Now, you, you know, you father can't, you can't burn him to death now, but you know what? Father can say, you know what? I'm done with you. Leave this house and don't come back till you change your ways, till you repent. If you don't repent, don't come back. I can't let you in. Sorry. Married mistress women who have children by another man. Let us understand the Most High God, how the Most High God feel about this type of deception. Ecclesiastes 23 and 22. Thus shall it also go with the wife that leaving her husband and bringing in an heir by another. There are many menstruous unclean women who have double-crossed their husband and have sired a child by a whoremongering man that she was having sex with during her marriage. This is why the Most High God does not want bastards in his congregation when the congregation, congregation does not know who the father actually is because you have tried to made a pair up sons and daughters to wife and you mess around and you don't know that this mistress woman that's in the congregation and her child she's slept with somebody in the congregation that you don't know about and that child is his and she ain't telling nobody and she don't know it could be his it could be so and so uh, it's gotta look like both of them I don't know Ecclesiastes 23 and 23. For first, she had dis disobeyed the law of the Most High. And secondly, she had trespassed against her own husband. And thirdly, she had played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man. This woman violated the law regarding adultery, being a menstruous woman in the husband's house, having a child by another man. Presently, many of these women are not ashamed of their actions and they are supported by feminists and the government. In many states, the husband of that woman will have to pay child support for a child that is not his. A woman get a divorce if she was married with a, by, to a man. But a lot of time, even though it can be established that that child does not, is not the, the husband's, he still will have to pay child support unless he get a good, damn good attorney. He go in there fighting on his own? No. They don't give a damn. Ecclesiasticus 23 and 24. She shall be brought out into the congregation and inquisition shall be made of her children. When the Israelites were in control of their own communities, this was the action that happened. That menstrual woman was brought out into the congregation and everybody would question her regarding the father of her children. Ecclesiastes 23, 25. Her children shall not take root, and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. This is the judgment that the Most High God will place upon the, her seeds. These children will not take root. They will die young from disease or living that gang life or from or other forms of death. But they will be serving double life sentences where they will spend most of their life in prison. These are monsters in the Israelite communities who are being raised by menstruous and unclean women. So y'all, y'all want to uh, the fact is, you know, you, you got to know where we at going wrong at, and a lot of this stuff. Is is where we going wrong at? We we with the we are with the wrong woman or the wrong man. You women, uh, 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 like I said, the fact is, just because of their mistress women, they're mistress men too, unclean men. And, and a lot of you women, just like the men, rush toward these women. You women rush toward the same mistress men, uh, unclean, you know, whoremongering men. You don't want a man that really go gonna stand by you and do the things do the things that 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 
God requires uh, you him to do. You don't want that kind of man. You you looking for a glamorous life. Y'all ain't everybody ain't gonna be in the glamorous life. And when you get there, you ain't gonna want to be there. Ecclesiastes 23, 26. She shall leave her memory to be cursed, and her uh, reproach shall not be blotted out. In the society today, evil is considered good, and good is consider considered evil. Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, but put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Be mindful of this. Society today is very corrupt. They have made evil lawful. The men of Israel are following the wrong leaders. We, we deal, let's deal with the men for a second. We have men in Israel that have no understanding of the Most High God. And those who do are not doing the work that is written in the book of the law. Many of our people are following after the foolish. Proverbs 24 and 1. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Our leaders today teaches you to gravitate toward evil men, women and systems. They teach prosperity, but not according to the Most High God. They got a different prosperity doctrine. Just come get this money. Everything is about money. Let's see what the Most High God said prosperity is. Joshua 1 and 8. The, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou, and then thou shalt have good success. I don't give a damn how much money you got. Just because you got money don't make you successful. Don't make you prosperous. You just have a bunch of things. Our leaders today do not teach the law of the Most High God. To observe, to do all that is written. This is how the Israelites gain prosperity. Even the Israelite leaders are not observing and doing all that is written. If they were, the so-called righteous among Israel would be prosperous. Proverbs 24 and 2. For their hearts studied destruction and their lips talk of mischief. Our leaders are given instructions that will destroy Israelites and their communities. Many Israelite leaders refuse to physically separate from their enemies, but think in a camp, in a school, in an unclean, uncontrollable community will suffice. When will you leaders stand up and make the laws, statutes, and commandments the foundation that you stand on, the cities you govern and build on? When will y'all do that? I'm waiting on somebody to say, you know what, we got enough members, we got 100,000 members, so let's make a run and try to get our own get our own system, get our own uh, piece of land. Proverbs 24 and 3, through wisdom is in house building, by understanding it is established. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, meaning that you Israelite leaders should be attempted to accomplish all that is written. However, your understanding is not fully established because you lack fear of the Most High and you are glorifying self. John 7 and 8. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Most of these Hebrew leaders are doing their own thing. Not according to the Most High God. They know the law, but do not the works. Proverbs 24 and 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. By the laws, which is the knowledge Shall your houses be filled? Malachi 2 and 7.
For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Let me make this clear. Because you know the law does not make you wise in understanding. The law alone does not make you wise in understanding. Christ made this clear when he was teaching his, his disciples and the multitude. Let's get this. Matthew 23 and 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples. So he was speaking to not only his disciples, he was talking to the multitude of Jews that was around, surrounding him. Matthew 23 and 2 said, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. The scribes and Pharisees were the leaders of the Jews. They were responsible for the law. This is not the Christian church environment. During this time, there was no such thing as so-called white Jesus. So, right here, y'all need to just eliminate the thought, the Christianity church thought out of your head because there was no Christianity church. It was just a synagogue in the temple. So, there was no Christian church. All of this is talking about Israel and Jude uh, Jews, how the Jews were, were performing. Let's make that clear. Matthew 23 and 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. That observe and do. But do not after do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. The scribes and Pharisees knew the law. But that did not make them wise. If it did, Christ would tell you to follow after their works. This is the example that I wish all of you following these Hebrew camps. You should examine this scripture and know the difference between wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Knowing the law does not make a Hebrew leader righteous when he is not observing and doing all that is written. Just because you have knowledge of the law, like the scribes and Pharisees, Christ said, yeah, observe and do what they tell you to, to, to do, but don't do it for their words. Because they didn't have wisdom. They didn't have a fear of the Most High God. And they didn't have understanding. A good understanding. Proverbs 24 and 5. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. A wise man fears his master, but when he keeps not gets knowledge, he increases strength. That you know, that's what wisdom works with knowledge. When you get what when you get wisdom, you get a fear. You do everything for haste. You get you learn the knowledge because the fear comes first. And you everything is done for wit. You do everything as fast as you look, know about it. Man, most high God say, do this, do this, do this. And a lot of you leaders have forgotten that feeling when you first got into this truth and got an understanding. A lot of y'all didn't get, get into truth the right way. You learned about it and you just something to do. How does a Hebrew get knowledge? A Hebrew that fears the Most High God does not mean he has knowledge of the Most High, but fearing the Master is the beginning of getting a good understanding. Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. With the Most High God's words, we have established that the law is knowledge. Malachi 2 and 7. And one who fears the most high will get a good understanding. Psalms 111 and 10. Wean from the milk and drawn from the breast is an allegory dealing with how long it takes to take a child off the breast and began giving them other sources of food. The normal time that a woman weans her child is between 12 to 24 months. This is the length of time required for Hebrews who has a fear of for a Hebrew who has a fear of the Most High God and desire to understand and knowledge of the God that he fears. 12 to 24 months is the length of time that you need to be studying to get knowledge because you already have wisdom when you start fearing the Most High God. 
So it's every every everything is in this in this precept that you need. Who who is going to teach wisdom? The people that fear him. It's the beginning of wisdom. And you get a good understanding when you start getting the knowledge. Isaiah 28 and 10. But precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. The Hebrew that fears the Most High will get an understanding of the Bible. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept to communicate what the prophet Christ or the apostles are saying. Then they read it line upon line, line upon line to fully understand the topic. If the understanding is not clear, then you go here a little, which might be a little clear, clear in the book of Matthews and there a little. And it was said earlier in the book of Isaiah. Simple. Proverbs 26, 24 and 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. Hebrews like to keep things in house instead of having a multitude of counselors. They claim a, a battle cry and a war cry, but when, when have they gathered together to discuss strategies, not a corner war, but a, to pull down strongholds? 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. One camp cannot undo what all the nations have done together. This is why Christ told his disciples to obey his father's laws that the scribes and Pharisees teach, but do not follow their work. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have the Arabs given dom dominating our people with Islam. Edomites dominating our people with white Jesus. Egyptology is dominating the minds of our people, etc. There are many imaginations, and one Hebrew group cannot battle all of them alone. They are set up for failure and are failing miserably. Proverbs 24 and 7. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He opened not his mouth in the gate. When a Hebrew has wisdom, it does not mean that he has not has no knowledge. They just have no fear. When a Hebrew has wisdom, it does not mean that he has no knowledge. They just have no fear of the Most High or understanding of the Most High. Wait a minute, I'm, there's something wrong here. When a Hebrew has no wisdom, it does not mean that he has no knowledge. When a Hebrew has no wisdom, it does not mean that he has no knowledge. They just have no fear of the Most High or understanding of the Most High. They got knowledge, but they don't have no, they, they have no, when they have no wisdom, they have no fear. They, they're not afraid. They know laws are laws, but they're not doing them. Like a lot of leaders in, our camp, in these camps, they have no fear. They got knowledge. Don't get me wrong, they have knowledge. They have studied these this, these precepts. They have knowledge, but they're not going to do the stuff that they, they you know, they, they, uh, they, they do the law like picking plums off a tree. They pick all the ones that are right for them to do, and that's the ones they're going to do. The ones they don't want to do, so they leave them on the, on the, on the tree. And let, oh, you know, I don't want to do those. Our leaders must be wise and understand knowledge. Our people are following a bunch of fools who do not know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, nor do they understand his word in order to righteously guide his people. Proverbs 1 and 2, 
to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the word, words of understanding, to fear the most high God and do all his command, all he commands, you become conscious and get a good understanding of what he requires of you. Proverbs 1 and 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. When a Hebrew aspires to be a leader, he must be willing to observe what the Most High God requires and do his commandments. Israelites have no justice or ability to, to judge because leadership still have to not deal communities that Israelite control. This is why Israelite communities are so chaotic. Because there is so much injustice and there are no righteous Israelite power in the communities that have the authority to judge and prosecute the wicked among us. Because we refuse to do it ourselves, honoring other satanic street codes, honoring some satanic street codes, Israelites have to go to our enemies to seek justice and judgment. We don't have no power in our own communities. It ain't like that we can grab the uh, grab the person that's committing the crime and stuff and, and punish uh, punish him according to the law. We we don't have we don't have no authority in our own communities. Once upon a time we did. But we so we we so this is this is the result of us integrating. This is result of integration. Our leaders have drug us into a, a flaming building and put it and set us on fire themselves. And they have no plan, no recourse, they have no action. Only thing they're doing is running their damn mouth. They need to just shut the hell up to me. They need to shut up. All of them who, who put themselves in the leadership power need to be quiet and say, just back, sit back. Because the fact is, y'all have done nothing but run your mouth the, the full time. And things are getting worse and worse and worse. Proverbs 1 and 4, to give suddenly to the simple, to young man knowledge and discretion. You have to be cunning and wise to teach the simple among us. A leader or teacher also must know how to give young men knowledge and not be offensive to them. They would not be willing to hear you when you are talking down to them. Matthew 10 and 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. If an Israelite man is walking as Christ walked, then take heed to these instructions. A wise serpent remains hidden, not exerting much energy in his hunt. It does not make everything that passes by its target. It normally does not attack things that it cannot eat, unless it feels threatened. You know, serpent is probably sitting in the bushes for, for the longest. Long as you ain't threatening to step on it, or you, you got a stick messing with it, it'll... You'll pass by it and you won't even know it's there. But say for instance a rat passed by that that's its size to eat, it's gonna it's gonna snap. It's gonna it's gonna bite it. A dove is one of the most harmless creatures on the planet. It does not attack anything. Christ used this analogy letting you know that as a leader or teacher, you must learn to be patient and observe their actions, speaking in a tone that is harmless as a dove. Wise as a serpent, you know you know how these how these Negroes act. You be wise to, to, to the games that they play in. The harmless of a dove. Because you know who you're talking to. Even then Christ knew knew that. His disciples are going to be talking to some dangerous, thuggish Negroes. Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. A man who fears the Most High God's judgment is willing and eager to, to learn. 
A man who understands the law knows who to seek. Righteous counsel. Our leaders have been systematically selected to fail their people. They do not speak in terms of the law, of the Most High God. They recommend everything except what is written in the law. Y'all notice that? They recommend everything else. During the Martin Luther King, uh, you know, that I have a dream speech was totally against the Most High God and the Bible. Most High God don't want us mixing with white boys and black boys and all this other stuff. If he had a dream about that, that's a damn nightmare because you know that did that dream right now is a nightmare to us right now. I wish he, I wish he wouldn't have had the dream. I wish he would have just said, shut the hell up. I want to be separate from all y'all. Speech. Proverbs 1 and 6, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Our leaders and teachers should be able to understand these proverbs, psalms, similitudes, and dark sayings. However, they never pull from their strength, which is why our nation remains weak at the bottom. Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. We have these fools in the nation and outside of the nation of Israel. Hebrew camps have knowledge, but they have no fear. Thus, they like wisdom. When a Hebrew becomes a leader, it is documented in the Torah. It is basically the law of the king, but he, simply, but he is simply a leader of his people. So, when we say the law of the king, that that is the that is the height that this law goes to. Now, if it goes to the king, it also goes to those beneath him. So the fact is, the law of the king is also the law of the leader, the so-called whoever whoever want to be a leader of the people. It's not that. What you can bishops are attempting to, to achieve? To be a leader of your people? Deuteronomy 17, 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shall thy set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brethren. Now, I like to expand this a little bit more. You know, let me let me read what I already have. We are going to establish who the Most High God sets over His people. He has never set a person who is not from the nation of Israel. The Most High chooses one from among the Israelites. This includes so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. And, and, it, and it eliminates those who are acting like strangers. You know, those people among Israel Who act like strangers should not be chosen it as well. Because they are representatives of the other nation. Those people who act like strangers and have taken on their ways. Because why would you uh why would you want to have somebody that uh, that doesn't do, do not act like the most high, the way the most I God tell you to act? Because your you know 
An Israelite should be an Israelite who is following the laws of the Most High God. The Most High God is not going to choose somebody acting like a stranger. So if if there come a time for when we need to uh, choose a leader temporarily before Christ come, you're not going to be somebody that is not doing the law, statutes, and commandments. Not obeying any laws, you know, eating pork chops every day and, you know, doing all kind of crazy stuff. You ain't going to choose one from among, you know, yeah, he might be your brother in regards to, uh, he might be Israel, but not Israel. Deuteronomy 17 and 16. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. To the end that he should multiply horses for as much as the Lord had said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that day, that way. In your leadership position, the Most High does not want the men that he choose receiving gifts that will turn them away from following him. You look at all of our prominent leaders today. They have received large sums of cash, cars, trucks, watches, jewelry, paid vacation, etc. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression make it a wise man mad, and the gift destroy it, the heart. Being in captivity make a man who fears the most high God judgments go mad for lack of everything. When people begin giving a, a leader gifts, they expect favors in return would violate the laws of the Most High God, thus destroying the mind. Because these people are willing to do, you know, overlook a lot of things when they start getting gifts and stuff to make whoever giving these gifts happy, you know. Deuteronomy 17 and 17. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. This is exactly what King Solomon was guilty of committing. First King 11 and 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians and Hittites. The Most High God never punished uh, Abraham, Jacob, and King David for their wives and concubines. He does not want his servants marrying women that would turn them away from worshiping him. The Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not the other nation's God. They are not interested in following him. Joel 2 and 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people should never be ashamed. Furthermore, Hebrew leaders should not multiply menstruous and unclean women to themselves. It does not matter if they are Israelites because we are not supposed to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath Righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion had light with darkness. The Most High does not want the righteous of his people book hooked up with the unrighteous. Deuteronomy 17, 18. And there shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law, and a book out of that which is before the priest, the Levites. When a Hebrew becomes the leader to his people, it is a requirement for him to not only have a Bible, but also have a fear of the Most High and an understanding of his laws, statutes, and commandments. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 17 and 19, And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law, and these statutes to do them. Our leader must be forever learning the laws of the Most High God. How would a leader be able to guide his people if he dare 
dare not, if he does not know which way to go. Deuteronomy 17 and 20, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandments to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. This is a primary reason why camps in Israel cannot get together because some of the camp leaders have puffed themselves up above their brothers in other camps. We must do better than this. How can you claim to love the Most High if you cannot get along with your brother? Should the men of Judah consider other races of women? I'm asking this question because there is a conversation on the YouTube Man of Spirit asking this same question. Many so-called black visually see that there is a problem with so-called black women. Many so-called black men, I'm going to put men there because, you know, they're, they're the problem. With so-called black women. They do not know that the Most High God already addresses these issues, but should men of Judah seek companionship with other races? Ecclesiasticus, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you how foolish this is. The most I got, no, I'm a, I beg your pardon. The most I got is gonna show you how foolish that question is. Ecclesiasticus 13 and 15. Every beast loveth his like, and every man loveth his neighbor. Why do you Israelites go against your own nature? Every nation should love those of his nation. The reason why is simple. We do not fear our power, nor do we have an understanding of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we have been programmed to hate ourselves. Ecclesiasticus 13 and 16. All flesh consorted according to kind. And a man would cleave to his like. The most high God says, all flesh according, all flesh mate according to their own kind. And man should do the same. Mate with his own people. Now, this is what the most high God is saying. Consorted mean mate. All flesh consorted, which mean mate according to their own kind, according to your own people. And man should do the same. Make with his own people. Ecclesiastes 13, 17. What fellowship had the wolf with the lamb? So the sinner with the godly. The prey does not have fellowship with the predator. Why are you Hebrews fellowshipping with your predators? Why are you sleeping with the enemy? The Israelites have a large family. If your father is so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands, those of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade, then the men of Judah can marry of these women. They are our people. Women of Judah must learn what has separated them from their head. Change course and stop being so haughty to the men of Judah. The average black man makes around 41000 per year. But most women of Judah overvalue themselves to not see value in a man of Judah other than money. They have no wifey, no wifey skills but are looking to be a stay-at-home wife to a successful man making upwards of 100 k Guess what? Other women who are wifey material are looking for him too. And they have a better chance than a minister's and unclean woman. That's just facts. Men, many Israelite men are poor leaders. Just as many women of Judah are menstruous and unclean, the men of Judah are horrible leaders. I find it difficult to tell women, tell, tell men, women, or children to follow a foolish man. Jeremiah 4.22 For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding 
They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. When an Israelite man does not know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his ways are foolish. He does not know whether he is coming or going. This is why all of our freedom movements end in destruction. Isaiah 42, 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. Therefore pray and none deliver it. For a spoil and none said restore. Our so-called leaders are not trying to restore the nation of Israel. Our enemies continue to rob us of our resources. These so-called leaders, most of them preachers, have provided no solutions. They have collected millions of dollars. But they are not interested in restoring their people. Isaiah 51 and 20. Now, I'm just saying they are not interested in restoring their people because the fact is you got these uh, Creflo dollars and TDJ collect millions and millions and millions of dollars each year. You know, Creflo got three jets. Just, just recently purchased a $65 million jet. And he have no, have no uh, programs to restore his people. To even start building in the community to, to create jobs and stuff for his people. He enjoys heaven right now because you know what? When that man dies, he, he has no he he has no means of getting into heaven. None of them. None of them do. You live a, a life a, a life like that. You you uh don't look back. You just take 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 take. The doors of heaven are locked for you. Isaiah 51 and 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie in the head of all the streets as a wild bull in the net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Because our preachers are teaching and robbing their people in the pulpit, the sons have lost faith and do not believe in what many, what any of these preachers say. Our so-called leaders are responsible for everything that is going on in our communities. They do not care because they have robbed their people and do not live in the communities they represent. Because of these leaders, our sons are fully asleep, living a thug life under a satanic street code. They are hanging out on the corners, selling drugs, robbing, stealing, and killing. They are wild bulls in the trap or the other net. Under surveillance, from time to time, the trap is set. And these wild bulls are hidden in prison houses. The nation of Israel have a lot of work to do. It is time to separate, stop talking, and start working towards building Israelite communities. It is time to make the Most High God in Christ our head and observe and do all they command the Israelites to do. My topic again, abominations of the Israelite men and women. We got problems. You know, you women have become unclean. A lot of y'all mistress, unclean women. You're just doing too much. You know, you know the hot girl summer, you're falling after the enemy, sleeping around with every every man. Nobody wants that. No, no righteous man of Israel wants that. And if you want to go play in field, go, go right ahead. This nation gonna get in order without you or with or without you. We're gonna get in order with, with or without you, women of Judah. And without you, men, you are leaderless men in, in Israel. Because you know you, you guys are, are don't want don't want to lead and don't want to be a leader. You don't have any knowledge. Those that's in leadership have no knowledge of their God. Have no solution for your people. Just have all this conversation and everybody's tired. The day, the day and the time is, is you know, we're tired of all of the conversation, all the talk. We need, we need to be putting hands to work. 
you know, gathering resources and stuff and putting putting out self to work, get to work as a nation, not as one person. Separate ourselves from, from the wicked and from the enemies. Oh well, this is my topic today, abominations of Israelite men and women. We, we know where we go wrong, but we know we don't really, you know, right now we don't, we don't care. It's just a, a, a wicked playing field out there and everybody want to play in it. And, you know, being controlled by a force, an evil force. And, and, and y'all, because, because you don't know who your God is, you don't know what to do. So when somebody tell you what the Bible says, it's all new to you. We're in the last days. We're in the time right now where the Bible is speaking in a lot of terms, even from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all the prophets, the, the, uh, the, the disciples, Christ, are speaking in this time period. The signs are here. And if you don't know what, if you don't know your God, know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or his son, how is that Jesus the Christ? You know, I'm not going to start this name doctrine with a lot of you, a lot of you Hebrews, because the fact is, y'all don't, y'all don't fell on stupid. The law is what's mostly important. You know, I don't care if you know. You, you like I said, the fact is. My kids don't walk around calling me by my first name. So what are y'all worried about your, your father's name for? Do what he says and don't worry about his name. He'll give that to you in due time. He, he told you that. Have faith. Y'all lack a lot of faith because the fact is the stuff that y'all do proves it. Anyway, y'all worry about the wrong, you waste too much energy on the wrong things instead of doing the work on the right things. It's tiring just even listening to a lot of y'all sometime like, man, before I got in the truth, they was in the truth already. They ain't got no further than this. Who you represent? Who you for? Who you with? I'm going to say a lot of y'all satanic and demonic because the fact is, you, you talk, you know, you know, a demon, you know, the devil, the devil know uh, more about this Bible than than than, uh, than a lot of y'all do. So it, it's it's not it's not unrealistic to to believe a devil has a Knowledge of the Bible. That's how they deceive a lot of y'all. With all of these things, right? Because I, I think a lot of it is demonic. Devil got knowledge just like just you know. Christ was Christ was speaking with a devil when he fasted forty days. It was trying to trick him up. Now, if you was if if, if one of y'all was a uh, uh, had fasted 40 days and he told you, uh, hey man, you know, you son of God, you can turn one of these rocks into to, to bread. Just just go ahead and, you know, you know, jump off this rock and the angels will catch you. You won't fall. You won't die. I'm both, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to jump off this doggone temple. I feel a lot of y'all, man, I tell you. We just need to, we just need to get better than that. That's, that's the only thing I'm saying. We need to focus on on real things that the Most High God requires of us. Have wisdom, which is a fear of the Most High God. 
And knowledge is learning the law. So you, you, you have wisdom first when you start fearing the Most High God. Then you seek knowledge and understanding. Because you learn the law, that's, that's how, how, who the Most High God teach knowledge. Them that un, make them that understand doctrine. He teach those who fear, his, fear, who fear him. Because you know the fact is, if you know only ten commandments and, and, and laws, and you do them all because you have a fear of the Most High, it's better than a person that has knowledge and do none. That's where that wisdom come from. Being, being, having wisdom of a, a, a fear of the Most High God is better than a person that has knowledge and no fear. Because you, you know the law just like the scribe and Pharisee. Christ told you, yeah, yeah do what they, they, they command you to do. But after their works, don't do none of that stuff. Anyway, hope you guys got some out of this. And with that family and friends, I like to say, Shalom. Shalom.